Hi guys, welcome to uh, another Flight Sim Lad video. Uh, we're here today looking at the uh, Aerosoft CRJ700 series aircraft, um, having a quick little review and uh, quick takeoff procedures, etc. Um, overall, at the minute, I've uh, been flying this since the uh, time of release. Um, my personal experience now, I've been flying with it on scheduled flights for about two weeks or so, so it's been released a week and a half even. Um, it's 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 very good. My overall uh, re review of it is it is a good aircraft. The um, a lot of the systems are are in place and do work. Um, again, there's a few bugs that don't work at the minute. Um, a few that we're aware of is the Aerosoft uh, do state that the uh, ILS systems are not currently working as well as they should. Um, when you're lining up for the ILS systems, it sometimes uh, takes a nosedive, and you can't actually recover that. You get lots of warnings, pull-up warnings, terrain, and it won't actually pick the ILS up at all. Um, that is a known bug. Another thing that uh, they're aware of at the minute is uh, cockpits freezing, especially when you enter the uh, departure and arrive information on the FMS system. Um, it's very hard to choose SIDS and stars at the minute on the FMS system. Uh, it won't recognize a lot of them even though it's a Lidu, Lidu system they've installed on here so my only gripe really um, with this aircraft at the minute is uh, number one you can't bind keyboard uh, the coding is completely different I've been uh, having a chat with uh, Mathis from Aerosoft um, so th the coding is completely different to Microsoft Flight Simulator's coding or Sobos coding so this is their in-house coding they've used for this aircraft so y you cannot physically bind the Microsoft buttons with the Aerosoft without using some kind of software encryptor. Um, another thing that doesn't work at the minute is the weather radar. Um, that doesn't work. Again, that's uh, on a Sobos fronts. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, the weather radar isn't actually the weather. Um, a lot of people think it is. It's not. The, what it's showing you on the weather radar is, in, in fact, the clouds. Uh, it's not actually showing uh, the thickness of the cloud or the weather ahead, you know, hailstones, rain. It's just showing you physically the cloud in front of you, uh, which it's pointless because you can already see it, unless you're flying at night. Um, so yeah, the systems in the aircraft are good. The uh, autopilot system is not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Um, altitude holds semi-working, it's uh, nose up, up and down in nose diving. The centre of gravity is a bit of an issue and a hot topic at the minute with this aircraft. Uh, but let's have a quick look at the externals like we do with every sort of review. As you can see, the, uh, they've put a lot of work into this and I think it's one of the most detailed aircraft I've seen on flight simulators so far. Um, you can pick this up for about 45 quid, so 45 pound British money. Um, from uh, £42 for Marketplace or Aerosoft Direct. Like, I always buy my stuff direct purely because I like to support the developers. I think it's very important that they uh, get the money that they deserve and um, you know you've already ploughed some money into Microsoft give some back to the developers. So landing lights are all looking good there. We've got some uh, taxi lights, landing lights, uh, nose wheel lights, uh, glide stop receptors, beacons landing gear looks pretty solid on there and I have got a, a mod on here the airport vehicles mod this is at Newcastle International Airport uh, I'm in Logan Air Colours lights on the wings pretty damn good textures on this aircraft are fantastic the you know there's there's not much nothing much better than this at the minute that's out there uh, little things that I'd like to see uh, somebody's asked uh, what, what would you like to see in this aircraft come to life um, there's not really much. The ability, the ability to maybe open the emergency exits, uh, put it into maintenance mode, maybe. Uh, but apart from that, there's nothing really more I would like to see. Uh, internally, I would, I wouldn't mind seeing the uh, being able to open the cockpit door. That might be a thing to come in the future, and uh, maybe about the emergency hatch above the head as well. So, <coughs> internally wise, uh, looking pretty good. The screens all work uh, so far. Again, key bindings don't work. The only thing I would say is the dome light's not very bright in this aircraft, so you're fine at night. 
it is pretty dark. It's a pretty dark cockpit. So here we are anyway. We are at uh, Newcastle International Airport. We're flying to Aberdeen. Uh, I'm not going to show the full flight because that's uh, for another video. But what I am going to show you is the basically the takeoff from the airport using the vertical speed to uh, maintain our current uh, ascent to 20,000 feet. So you can see here we are on live traffic. I don't have any AI traffic um, engaged. Uh, we've got somebody else on a CJ4 in Logan Air colours. It's probably my own. We did have some traffic knocking around before. Awesome. So let's get this aircraft fired up. So what we have to do, a lot of people ask questions, you know, why, why can't I start the aircraft? Why is it cold and dark? So this this is what the aircraft looks like when you get into it. You know, there's no external power on at the minute. It's been sat overnight. It's been due to COVID. We've been sat for a week now. Uh, so what we have to go and go ahead and do is actually start the aircraft. Now, the easy way to do that is you get in, get into the aircraft, and we we'll turn on our EFB, electronic flight bag, which is basically an iP iPad that would control the systems and the FMS system here on board. So we're going to go down to aircraft, and what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm actually going to connect the uh, power source now. I'm going to open the doors, so as if we've just got on the aircraft. Chocks have to be in place for the uh, ground power cart to be on. So we shall turn that on. Cabin lights, we don't want people to see, so we'll turn them up full. And uh, what we'll do, we'll have a look outside now. Stairs are down, chocks are on. Cool. When he's in place, we look up to the uh, top panel here, and I've got my actual custom view set up here so we can see the uh, the top panel, which is pretty cool. And uh, so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to turn the uh, battery isolator on. We've got a couple of warnings. Newcastle clearance delivery. Logan Air 79er 155 You can see, so... Ready to copy. Oh, this is pain in the arse, is this... Uh, Automatic ATC. Take off runway 07 climb and maintain 9,000 feet. Departure frequency is 119 decimal 875 squawk 1471. So we're not actually taking off from runway 7 at all, we're taking off from runway 25 due to the wind. Logan Air 79 or 15 cleared to Aberdeen Airport as filed. Right, Take anyway. off runway 07 climb and maintain 9,000 feet. Thank Departure you. on 119 or decimal 875. Oh, Squawk 1471. I'm going to turn that off. Logan Air 79 or 15, read back correct. Contact ground on 121 decimal 7 tree. Oh my god, be quiet. Right, so here we are. Uh, overhead panel and external power. You'll see once we're connected, it'll come up as available. So what you want to do is go ahead and press that. Uh, for the passengers, I would put the air conditioning on and it should actually come on in just a tick. We'll turn the overhead panel lighting on so we can see. Seat belts need to be on. Now with these switches you will notice guys you have to use the cog wheel on your mouse. Um, you do have to use them unfortunately they haven't kind of fixed them at the minute but you have to use the cog wheels. And with this aircraft the hydraulic system needs to be engaged once the engines are on. Uh, you must leave them disengaged whilst they've got ground crew on the ground because uh, it does run at some severe high pressure. Okay, so going from there, you can see now that we are our computer systems are now on with external power. And what I'm going to do right now is if there's a real world, real life, I'm going to actually power up the uh, APU, uh, give us some power externally. So I'm going to open the door. Initiate the power to the APU and press start. And this should now, you see in the uh, MFD there, it should spill it up. We've got the back of the aircraft, so we should be able to hear it. See there, the uh, APU flap is open. Excellent. So the APU is firing up, so what I want to show you now, guys, is we need to. Um, get them vaults in and we're going to turn the backlighting on there so we can see display I want full because it's daytime armrest up and what I'm going to do now guys is I'm actually going to go through the setup process to import the route to the FMS system 
So once we've got that on, we've got that on there. Power's now on, we've got green. Excellent. So what we're going to do now, guys, is I'm actually going to disconnect the uh, external power. We don't need that anymore because we're now running off the uh, APU. So we're running off our own power source. So we just enable these uh, GPS systems on board now. Uh, ACAR systems. So go down to the bottom left. Come on, nav. And I've got mine to go automatically. Ideally, it does take about seven minutes to initialize. Um, reset the uh, Q&H there. So anyway, so let's have a look at the FMS system here. So with this FMS system you've got, uh, it's quite a sophisticated system. It, I would suggest that we uh, you know let's just enable that, set position. I would suggest that you do some research on this. Read the manuals on this aircraft. There is a lot to uh, to take in. Um, I'm still getting to grips with this FMS system. It's completely different to the Airbus system. Um, so yeah, learning something new every day. So, what you want to do guys is you want to go use this Simbrief tool, which you can see here we're flying from Newcastle to Aberdeen today. Um, we've basically imported our fuel. Uh, it's all been done on Simbrief. It is the easiest if you download the Simbrief downloader. Uh, so it would directly input it into the FMS system when you select it. And these are the waypoints we're going to be taking. Okay, quite a nice easy flight. Uh, without alternatives in there as well. So we'll come out here. We'll go to flight plan. Uh, don't input them start and finish here. This is how you would convectionally do it. Uh, so because the routes are already saved on the FMS system. Uh, Simbrief's imported them. All I'm going to do is press uh, EG. NT. Uh, we're going to put EG, PD, all in the same sentence. EG, PD. Okay. And what that'll be, guys, so put that in the root section. Click it into the root section. Root loaded. And press execute. And there we go. That's the root now inputted into the... Uh, FMS system, you can see there that uh, we've got off run with we've, we're taking off a run with two five, not seven. The ATC has got it wrong on this occasion. Uh, the wind is uh, well, basically coming from the east at the minute, and it's, it's about twenty seven knot of wind at the minute, so it's quite powerful. So, all you want to do, guys, after this point, is uh, go back to your cockpit view, and I'll just put the integral light so we can see the buttons here. Uh, minimize this, uh, change the format, and have a look, change it to plan. And you can see there we have our flight plan on the screen. Uh, so if we zoom in, uh, runway 25, taking off, turning right, and then we'll be heading advance there. We're heading to the stars. Sit to the stars, that's our departure route. Next, next, next. We're following that, following this, going up into Scotland, coming across, and then approaching the SIDS and stars into uh, Aberdeen. Don't quite know what's happening here, so what we want to do now is look on the legs section and find out if there's any discontinuities, which I imagine there probably is. That's why it's not uh, lining up so well. There we go, there's one discontinuous. So what you want to do with discontinuous guys is delete them. That's basically where the uh, navigation stops. So you, what you want to do is get rid of that and it will pick up onto the navigation path. And get rid of the vectors as well. So delete the vector. Get rid of them. Excellent. So runway 16 has got our Mr. Proton there too. So, let's have a look at these waypoints again. Next waypoint, next waypoint. Up, 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 up. Ganky, Maxwell. 
Right, so this is what, it's, it's taken us past the airport here, and it's going to, I don't think we can zoom in anymore, but it's going to take us left, after that, and we're going to turn a, a sharp left again, and then enter the ILS path, at 2,500 feet, and then into the, the runway there. So that's actually all set up for the runway 16, at Aberdeen. Awesome. Fantastic. So, now we want to set our autopilot up so we've been given altitude. We're going to go for about, uh, I think we're going to go for about 18,000. Eighteen thousand feet. Awesome. And initially we're gonna set the uh VNAV speed. So we'll set the VNAV speed, climb forty. And we'll set that to about set that to about two thirty. Two forty. Awesome. Right, so my flight is now set up. We're ready to go, and I'm going to do a quick, uh, a quick talk through the startup process that uh, I use for this aircraft. So we we'll get everybody on board. Close the doors. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Thank you very much, Lila. Ladies and gentlemen, on performance wise, well, guys, you can actually pull the. Uh, pull all the weights and stuff across here so because I've set it up for the FMS on Simbrief um, you can import it from the aircraft so I'm going to import my fuel from the aircraft because I know the FMS system is set up correctly 52 passengers on board today and the weight load in there so takeoff speed is 142 knots there so we're going to remove the wheel chocks and we're now going to initiate and ask for a pushback. So I'm actually just going to press shift and P guys just to make things a little bit quicker here. I'm not, uh, just, just to clarify as well, I'm not following ATC um, here from Newcastle because I'm running off a sim brief flight pattern so they don't know what I'm actually flying so they're just going to tell me that I'm wrong all the time. So moving back now, let's get that beacon on, ready to get those engine starters, wing inspection, emergency lights are armed, seatbelts are on, recognition lights, taxi lights are on, and I'm actually going to enable the ignition now, gens, gens are both on, ATU is active, anti-ice, I want probes, I want probes on, which will activate once we start the engine, air conditioning on, passenger comfort, okay. get pushed back. I do apologise guys if it's a little bit laggy. Um, I am recording off the same device so it is on an SSD but sometimes I get a little bit of lagginess going on there. But I'll do that. Shift P, let's stop. Handbrake on. Right, let's get these engines cranked over. Let's get that back up there. So we'll see. What we're going to do, overhead panel guys. We're going to go ignition on. Fuel pumps are on. There's uh, no lights available so that would tell me that if there are any lights on it usually means that same as an Airbus that the uh, needs turning off basically. So let's go ahead and crank the engines over. Press start. Look at the dial, you can see the uh, ITT is getting high. Make sure they're not in the red. We'll hit legs, we'll hit progress. You've also got your checklist on here as well. So after start checklist. So guys, rookie mistake, don't forget to put the engines into the start position. <laughs> rookie mistake there. Get them into the idle position, you'll see them fire up. They're not going to go anywhere until you disengage the shutoff switches there. If, see, if, if I followed my checklist, I would have seen that. Let's get engine 2 on the go. Start 
sounds wise guys this aircraft is fantastic for sounds sounds just like the real thing if I'm honest um, yeah it is really good and you get this lovely uh, Australian bird that talks to you Okay, they're looking good. Awesome, so the engines are now running. Temperatures are good. We can now knock the ignition off. Okay. Now we're good, guys. On this aircraft, you have to engage the hydraulic system now manually. So, we'll go up to the top and we'll turn the systems on to auto. Automatic for all the hydraulic systems, make it simple. And that will now enable us to be able to use our control services. Also, guys, you need to arm the nose wheel. Nose wheel hydraulic steering. And then you'll start to see these uh, good little yellow lights go out. We'll put some windshield heat on low. Probes are on. Ice test. All good. Excellent. Recirculation fan is on. Camp pressure set to automatic. Excellent guys, one more thing you have to do on the uh, control panel is turn the comp stack on. Also enable the, the MAC trim, hold it down. No. Okay, your damper needs to be on guys. Stabiliser trims need to be on. And that should go off, there we go. Your autopilot will not work with the... with the... Um, without your damper being active, so uh, yeah. Altitude, speed, climate 240. Excellent, so there we go. We can now uh, put our flaps down to flaps in the 8th position, flaps 2. Uh, we'll test our control services there. All good, spoilers armed. This, these are not ground spoilers, guys. I must reiterate this. These spoilers here are not designed to stop you, therefore, they are for descending just to take some speed off when you're actually descending so if you actually go down to the uh, main control board here uh, we need to arm also we need to, need to arm the reverse thrusters as well on here the buckets so there you go so we've got we can we disarm the spoilers but tell you that ground spoilers are not armed so now when I press the spoilers Okay, so that's not uh, obviously working very well. Right, so we're ready to taxi. Let's get to runway 25 and uh, yeah, here we go. APU still on, guys, in case you have to make an emergency shutdown. And away we go. by Newcastle. I've got quite a long taxi here guys. So you notice as well guys, the uh, the ATC actually in uh, Flight Simulator does uh, line you up in the wrong conditions, so today's the wind is coming from the sort of west, southwest of it at the minute uh, in real life, so the sim brief takes the data off real life uh, METARs, um, but the ATC for the Simulator will tell you to take off from runway 7, so it's asking you to do a downwind takeoff, which you would never do. 
unless obviously the runway was closed for whatever reason you had no choice. So I'm just going to head on down the runway now. We're a little bit fast, but I just want to get to the takeoff point just to show you guys what uh, what to do on takeoff. And a lot of people use the vertical speed on this aircraft. Not recommended. Uh, it's not something you would use in real life. You wouldn't use the vertical speed ideally in real life. Uh, the vertical speed is more or less designed to initiate descents of small small levels. So if you want to go down 1,000 feet, or you would say 25,000 feet, you want to climb at 27,000 feet. That's when I would use the vertical speed. Uh, to climb in a safe fashion, I would use the uh, vertical speed at, uh, at all costs. It's very rare I would use the uh, vertical speed. Um, I'd use the, uh, the speed, the VNAV speed. So apart from that guys, there's a lot of, um, a lot of things that are very good with this aircraft. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has advised that we are now cleared for takeoff. Looks good. Okay, so we already the before flight checklist. I'm not going to go through them all because I just want to get it airborne and show you guys what to do. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to activate the landing lights. I'm going to put the strobe lights on, emergency lights, wing lights are on. Uh, so all our lighting should be on. There we go, strobe lights, landing lights. One thing I would say with this aircraft is that I don't think the taxi lights or landing lights are bright enough at the minute. So we're... Uh, we're clear of take off, I say we are, there's no incoming traffic, let's get on the runway. And at this point guys, we can knock the APU off, and close the door when it's ready to cool down. One thing you will notice guys with this aircraft is it takes a lot to get off the ground. It's, uh, there's some issues with the weights uh, at the moment. As long as you try and get the centre of gravity sort of right so you can uh, get off with a good takeoff. So let's punch it guys, let's go for it. Clip takeoff from a 25 Newcastle Gold Fox from the India Sierra Hotel. Or if we're flying by airline, Logan Air 7915. You can see there the sounds are pretty good. I do have uh, my own rudder on here, so please bear with me. I'm just trying to keep the aircraft straight. One twenty, one forty, V one, rotate. That runway straight, there we go, a little bit windy. Positive right, gear up. Okay, autopilot engage, navigation hold. Positive right, positive speed, flaps up. Go. Flaps have travelled. Flaps are back to normal. So I'm going to enable throttle down to climb. And that's now monitoring my speed on descent. 240 knots on descending. It's roughly about 2,500 feet per minute. And we're just lining up with the uh, navigation track. There she is, guys. So I'm not I'm not using vertical speed here. I'm only using the VNAV speed, which we should be using to us ascend and descend. It's a controlled environment. Speed sat at 240, which is fantastic. And about a 10 degree angle of attack there, which is about right for this aircraft. Ten, between 10 and 15 degrees, as I would expect. Um, there we go. 
So we're at a steady climb now on the uh, on the track. We've got a nice warning, guys. So then we'll head up there. It's not automatic on this, so I would initiate the ice warning. So now we're at a good altitude now. I'm going to let the passengers walk around, turn the seatbelt off. <coughs> in the EU, guys, in England and Scotland, the uh, the altitude, the transition altitude is 10,000 feet. Uh, we would disable our landing lights at 10,000 feet. So at 10,000 feet below, we would have our landing lights on. Uh, the TCAS system on this aircraft doesn't work at the minute, although you can actually uh, select it and uh, and test it. See there, traffic, traffic, traffic. Tells you where the traffic yeah, is on it. But it doesn't actually uh, actually work, unfortunately. So you can see there that this is the this is the flight sim route, uh, which is completely different to to my route. We're kind of flying up here and up, down and back in. So there we go, guys. Transition altitude, 10,000 feet. We'll turn the white lights are off. Logo light, moving inspection off. Thank you ever so much for watching, guys. Uh, I'll be uploading part two when we come to land using the ILS system, if we can, if it will let us do this. Uh, but yeah. There we go, there she is. Flying like a dream. We do have wind flex as well with this aircraft, so... Thank you very much for watching. Take care there, stay safe. And hopefully see you... Uh, see you in the skies. Flight Sim Lad, please like and subscribe. Your support is much appreciated. Thanks guys!